thanks for joining me again. So you're probably looking at all of this and thinking, what is all of that stuff sitting there for? Well, when I did the tests on my base coat and I thought I was doing everything the same as what I normally mix my base coat as and I got totally different results. So then I was wondering if the formula had been changed on the Master's Touch paint and then I was assured that it had not been changed and so I was thinking I don't understand why I got such different results then if there was no change with this and then I was talking with my sister and she said well you know that flow trawl was in my vehicle and it did freeze so then I wasn't sure if maybe it was the fact that this flow trial had frozen. So we got a different bottle of flow trial that as far as we know has not been frozen. So I'm going to do another one where I'm going to mix up permanent black in two of the cups and I'm going to mix up the titanium white in two of the cups and the only difference between them is going to be the flow trial that's used so I will put the previously frozen flow trial in one set of the cups one of the blacks one of the whites and then I will put the not frozen flow trial in the other two cups and I'm going to mix them up the same so there will be 28 grams of Floetrol in each of the cups and then there will be 9 grams of paint in each of the cups and 8 grams of water in each of the cups. So that'll all be the same and the only other difference is that I usually use tap water and the water that I had put in them was purified water. I don't know that that would have any kind of difference on it or not but I thought since I normally use regular tap water I got me a cup of regular tap water that I will be using for this just so that that's not a consideration either so once I get these mixed up then the colors that I will be using is Dioxazine Purple by Liquitex Basics Metallic Green by Deco Art, Cobalt Hue by Folk Art, Extreme Glitter Sea Sparkle by Folk Art, Purple by Delta Ceram Coat, and I'll finish with Pearl Gold Green by Arteza. This is actually the color that I decided on first. I was putting other paints away and I saw this one and I thought, I really want to do a painting with this one. And so then I was trying to decide on colors that I thought would uh, go well with it. And so that's how I came up with the color palette that I'm going to be using today. So let's go ahead and mix these up. and then we'll get painting. So I do have some of the Floetrol in different containers. So the one in this bottle is the one that has been frozen before and the one in this container has not been. That way I can keep track of which is which. So I put my cup on the scale and then I push the tear button. It is set on grams. So I always put the flow trial in first because it seems like the paint will mix up better if the flow trial is already in there. 
So 28 grams of Floetrol. Now, I'm also going to put the Floetrol in this one. So those are the two for the frozen one. I'm gonna get that out of the way. I think it's much easier to pour it out of this than it is out of the bottle, but I think that's because I'm used to um, straining mine into a cup and then pouring it from the cup, and then I can also see where it is compared to the top of the container that I'm pouring it out of. So I'm going to set that off to the side. <clears throat> Since I don't have time to cover that right now, I just went ahead and set a tile over the top of it so that it'll keep um, keep it from drying out and keep anything from getting into it. So now that I've done those, I guess I can leave that one on here. I'm going to push the tear button again. I'm gonna do the white first. Because then as I clean up, it'll be easier. Because the black gets on everything. Okay, so now we are doing 9 grams of paint. Don't remember which one if I care for. I usually have the top off of these, so it's easier to, yeah, that must be the air hole, actually. Ah. So that one goes over here.
since it's been a bit since I have um, done anything with the scale, I'm, I just push on it a little bit so that it'll raise that up because then it'll keep it from shutting off while I am in the process of adding paint to it. Because sometimes if you're adding paint at a slow rate, then it'll kind of think that you're not doing anything and so it will shut off. Now since this has the lid off, it's going to come out really fast. So. down so it's like right on the edge so then I scrape that off and put it on there because then it should put it right where it's supposed to be so that one's gonna go there and then okay I don't know why it's not Alright, so now that those have the paint and the Floetrol in them, I stir them up. And the reason you want to stir them up is because then when you add the water, it will mix better with the paint. Because it seems like if you put all three in together before you start mixing, it takes a long time to get it to fully incorporate. get as much black off of my fingers as possible. So in the set of silicone stuff that I got to work with my paints and my resin, it had that container that I had the Floetrol in. It also has this little mat that you can roll out. It has four little cups in it. And it's got um, five little heart-shaped cups in it. It has two of this size. Uh, these are both 100 mil. The other one that I used is a um, one cup. And then this one is 600 mil, which is 20 some fluid ounces. I tried using this one before and it kind of worked, but it's really, really flexible. So it didn't work as well as I was hoping it would, but I really like the other sizes and it came with four of these sticks and I like using those. I use them quite a bit actually. So I have four of these sticks. That's what I'm going to use to mix up those so that I don't contaminate the results at all by using the same stick. So they'll each have their own. I got this set off of Amazon. If you're interested in it, I have a link down in my description that uh, is for this. I also have other links for other products that I use and like. So if you do follow that and if it is a qualified purchase, then I will get a small commission off of it. It doesn't affect how much you pay at all. My main goal for having links down below are so that 
when you're looking for things, if you're not sure what to use, whatever, you can actually find the products that I'm using because I know when I started out, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to use, what would be the best items to use and stuff like that. And sometimes I really struggled to find like the torch. I tried several different torches actually and finally found one that I like. But when I would look and trying to find um, which one people used and stuff, sometimes I was following their links and everything just to find out that they have all kinds of torches on their page. And so I wasn't sure which one they actually used. And that's what I was wanting to know. Which one do you use? Which one do you like? Which one works well? So all of my links are items that I use that I like that I think work well. And sometimes I may have more than one item that's similar, but I like them and I've used them. So I won't put links for things that are similar to what I use that I think might work or that you might like, but if I've actually used them, those are the things that, that will be listed there. Alright, so those are mixed. Now to mix these. So right now my mom is upstairs baking an apple cake and it smells wonderful. I can't wait until it's done and cools off enough that we can enjoy some of it. All right, so now that those are mixed, I'll put eight grams of water in each of them. Now it's okay that it has the stick in it still because when I put it on here and I push the tear, then it will clear all of the extra weight. So that doesn't matter. My biggest thing is I have this cup and I'm afraid I'm gonna spill water all over. So I'm gonna get one of those little beakers, pour some of it in there. Right, yes, that will definitely be much easier. Make sure that. I'm done with the scale. If you push the tear twice, then it shuts off. I had to push it three times because I pushed it once and then I moved the scale and so it changed the weight on it. But if it's just sitting there and you push it twice, it shuts off. So now I just gotta make sure that I get the water mixed in well. And now since I'm mixing these up right before I'm doing the painting, I will have to make sure that I torch really well because there's going to be probably a lot of bubbles from mixing it. Although I usually mix them up into bottles and so those I shake and so those probably actually will have more bubbles than just stirring it in a cup, but there still will be plenty of bubbles. And the consistency is a nice consistency. It just runs right back into the cup. Yep. 
All right, so what I'm going to do next is grab my marker. coasters. So one of the things I really like about these mats is that you can write on them and then you can clean them off with either a baby wipe or with um, rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. So I'm going to mark over here an F for frozen. Doesn't really mark heavy on it. Sometimes it will I'm like right slower and stuff and an N over here for not frozen that way I remember which ones are which easier I don't have to try to remember what I did and then on the backs of these where they're all taped off I'll put an N for not frozen and two of these F for the frozen because that way also when they dry I will know what's what oh and make sure you stick around to the end of the video and I will show you the dried results of the tiles that I did in yesterday's video so now that I did that Grab these cups. Not really sure where I want these setting. I guess I can have those out a little further too. I have to be right, right there. Now I'm not quite as concerned about if the um, tiles are perfectly level over here. I still check them because you don't want them to be way, way off. That one's level, that one's level. This one's a little low on the one side. This one's pretty low. Okay. Now it's level. Still low on that side. Okay. So I just take a little piece of paper towel. It's level that way. So this side is a little bit low. I just stick it right there, and now it's level. And that one was low on that. And I think it was level the other direction though. Okay, it's a little low here and here. So I'm going to put it right there. still a little bit low so then I'm going to just double this over it doesn't take much with the tiles now that's level and that's close to level. So, I mean, it is good enough that I'm going to be moving them afterwards so that they can dry in a spot that is level. So it's not going to be a problem anyway. All right. Uh, I'm going to start with the white ones because then if I have a little bit of white on my fingers, it's not going to affect the background. Um, whereas if I use the black and I don't get it completely cleaned off, then it can make the gray or can make the white look gray. And I don't want that to happen. So
right, so they are all covered. Uh, I popped the bubbles. There was a little bit of stuff in them. There might still be a little bit in a couple of them. Um, part of that is because I have the furnace going because unfortunately this morning it was four below zero here. So I have to have the furnace going, which I also have a space heater, but I turn that off when I'm recording because I've noticed that it makes a horrible amount of noise when I'm recording. I know the furnace does too. Um, I've been wanting to get a microphone, but I checked into it and the one that I want to get is $150. So I'm sorry, I hope you're able to hear everything that I say okay. I know sometimes I've noticed that parts of my videos are a little hard to hear. So I apologize for that. If you have any good recommendations for a microphone, um, I would love for you to let me know in the comments. All right. Um, I was wanting to do something kind of fancy with these, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and put the circle in and just keep putting circles because I think it's better. It's easier to control how much I'm actually putting down of each color to make sure that they are um, as equal as possible. only if it consistently comes out of the bottle. Alright. Can't tell how much I have on this one. I was wondering when I started doing it well, when I was picking out my colors before, I was wondering if I needed a lighter color to put on it so that you'd see it better on the black. But then a lighter color, I didn't know how well it would turn up on the white either. So, I don't know. Hopefully you'll still be able to see it. Maybe this is the color I should have put on the bottom. It's too late now though. So it'll still turn out beautiful. Actually, you can't even see the bottom purple really in any of them. You can see an itty bitty slight tiny ring. So, not sure what's going to happen with that. really like this color. I think it's so pretty. All right, I'm going to torch the bubbles. So. 
Well, that caused quite the reaction. All right. And I'm using the world's smallest leaf blower to blow them out. Those are really pretty. And yes, you cannot see that bottom purple in much of any of them. I see a little teeny stripe of it right there in that one. And this might, I think that's green in this one. It might be a slight bit of that, but I'm not sure that it is. And this one, there's a little bit of blue, tiny bit in here. But I really, really like that gold green. I like the effect that it's giving that is really, really pretty. But what I'm not really noticing is much of a difference in the cells between the flow trawl that froze and the flow trawl that didn't. But the surprising thing is that these are not really creating a lot of the, the lacing that my old ones were, but the black is. And the black is an older bottle than the white is. So even though they said that they didn't change the formula, I don't know. I'm thinking something has changed between the old bottles and the new bottles. All right, I'm going to scrape my edges and then I'll bring you back down. All right, here they are. I would love to hear what you think about these in the comments. So here is the one that had frozen before. And it's giving me the same kind of lacing that I was getting with my white before. Although, 
I used to get more cells too. So I don't know. There's only a couple cells. And here is the white that had been frozen. Just a few more cells in this one than in the black. But nothing like I was getting before. I do like the colors. I think they're really, really pretty. Here's the one that was not frozen. I'm actually not really noticing as many cells in this one. Oh, and I was just trying to figure out why does this look so dark? I have two lights behind me that I usually turn on and I forgot to turn those on. So that's why it is so shadowed. Well, anyway, I'm going to turn off the overheads and I'll turn on my flash and then we'll see what we can see. Here they are with the flash. They really have a lot of sparkle and shimmer to them, which I really like. I wasn't sure how much the gold would show up in that pearl gold green by Arteza. Because when you look at it, I mean, you can see that there's some gold in it, but you don't see much. You see a lot more of the green than you do of the gold, but this is really pretty. Again, a couple cells, but not a whole lot more. And there's a couple cells in that one. over there. And that green. Oh, it's so pretty how it just shimmers so much. And the gold. And then the part that looks light blue is actually the sea sparkle mixing with the cobalt hue that's underneath of it. But that's pretty too. Okay, and this is the one that was the non-frozen Floetrol. This really does just kind of stump me though because the other that I had mixed up I mean it would shrink back like this a lot the white did but like I said I was also getting some really pretty cells with it and not seeing a whole lot of that in these Let me know what you think in the comments. If you like it, I would appreciate it if you would hit the like button so that my video will go out to more people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Thank you to all my current subscribers. I really appreciate all your support. Stay tuned for the dried results of the flip cup on coasters.
these are really really pretty I love how they dried I love the motion that's in them they just look like they flow I think they look like petrified rock or those polished stones that they slice and it's got all of those colors in it so are really really pretty it's so hard to see all of the different variations in the shades and the stripes of the colors this down here has metallic in it doesn't show up as much now as when it was wet but once I put resin on it you'll see that again I really do like how these turned out. I was kind of debating on if I should add just a little bit of gold or some other metallic color to them, or well, to the paint before I put it on here. And that probably would have looked really pretty with it too. And the next time I do this, I might go ahead and add just a little bit to see what kind of effect that will have on it as well. I like this right in here. It's a really pretty turquoise color. That is all really pretty. These are available for sale. If you are interested in them or in these, shoot me a message at tammyvonart at gmail.com. I will get back to you as soon as possible. All right. I will catch you later. Bye and God bless.